सहनावतु सहना भुन सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मेदिषावह शांति 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 ही मे द लॉर्ड प्रोटेक्टस मे ही नरिशस मे वी अक्वायर द कैपेसिटी टू स्टडी एंड अंडरस्टैंड द स्क्रिप्चर्स मे अवर स्टडी बी ब्रिलियंट एंड मे वी नॉट कैवल एट ईच अदर ओम पीस 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 एंड टू सॉल Dear brothers and sisters, loving Sai Ram to everyone, welcome to the Satch Sai Baba Center of Arcadia. We are doing the study circle on Gita Vahini, the commentary by our Bhagwan Sri Satch Sai Baba and Bhagavad Gita. So we are on page twenty-four, and in <laughs> your uh, uh, email it is page seventeen. because the important uh, thing is arjuna was in delusion in moha and lord krishna swami beautifully said so he is explaining in three ways how to get rid of moha because what is moksha what is moksha so swami made it very simple moha chaya is moksha once your moha is gone then you are liberated so we make it not complicate to going here there heaven that is not the thing moha once your moha is gone your moksha so he arjuna was in moha what was the moha about his uncles and uh, his uh, grandparents and teachers so he was deluded about that so he was in moha which happens to lot of us for different things you are attached to your um education your intellect or your physical strength or your power wealth name fame youth anything all this is bind you into delusion because you are forgetting your real nature which is the atma so here the whole secret that is why swami said here three things lord krishna is telling that is why we are expanding on that first he is taught what is the absolute reality from shloka 12 to 30 in chapter 2 sankh yoga then chap- uh, 30 to 38 he talks about what is our dharma what is our things we should everybody should do because that is what we do and then 38 onwards he says how do we do the action nishkama karma he says and then if you do that then from shloka 54 to 78 he talks about sthita prajna how does the man who is enlightened behaves so if you really practice all this you are enlightened so in the beginning itself is giving the really very important points that is why we are talking about uh, those things so because this gita is so important it's the essence of all the upanishads because we can very few people can read 108 upanishads and go but lord krishna made it easy text for us took the all the important uh, message from those things sarvopanishado garo dogdha gopalanda we said he milked the summary and gave the gita amrutam that means the it is the nectar of the gita so by drinking which when you drink amruta what happens we become Mata. immortal so the way to immortality is drink the gita that is why this is so powerful thousands of years 5000 years before christ it was given still it is there it will be there forever it is eternal message and universal it is not only by people in hindus do that it, people all over the world europeans or uh, latin am any place because anybody who is a real sincere spiritual true seeker knower of truth 
will give answers here. So this will be forever. That's why all the great masters, Shidi Baba used to talk about this. So Swami gave so many discourses, including writing Gita Vahini. He gave many discourses explaining about uh, Bhagavad Gita. And it was a favorite for Mahatma Gandhi, wherever he gave. Used to actually in this particular chapter, I said 54 to 72 about the Sita Prajna's qualities. He used to write in his bathroom every day, he used to memorize one shloka of another Mahatma Gandhi. It was and Swami Vivekananda, it was his favorite. So, all the great masters, so who are they have referred to this that is the source of all knowledge. So, coming back to the chapter 2, what did we talk about? First 12 to 30. So, the difference between Atma and Anatma. So, just I will highlight, at least people should remember shlokas, make it note. Shloka 7, where Arjuna says, I am surrendering to you. I don't know what is right and what is wrong. So, please show me the way. Like, it happens to all of us. So, all of us sincerely pray to the Lord, show me the way. Then he will show. That is number one. Then, up to then, Lord Krishna was quiet. Then, Sloka 11, he says, he starts telling the uh, knowledge. He says, a person with knowledge will never grieve about the living or the dead people who are gone. So, that, is what, so that means that is what whenever we are grieving, that means we still have to do more spiritual practices. Then, to explain why you should not grieve, he is a good teacher, he is a Jagat Guru. He gives explanation. There is Atma and Anatma. Atma, nobody can kill because it cannot be killed by weapons. It can be burnt by fire. It can be wet by water. It can be dried by air. It can be affected. So, so why are you worrying about? Because these people who are there, they will, they were there before, they will be there again because there is Atma level. If you are thinking of body, mind, Intellect, yes, that will be gone. That will be affected by fire. We know that we put fire on our body, it will burn, or water, it will become wet. So the real Atma, that's why he's showing the difference, because so that we don't get confused with body, says that is different. But this person, if you are not spiritually evolved, you may not understand, oh, what is this Atma? Where did I see? I didn't see Atma. I didn't. <laughs> so he himself says, people hear about Atma, talk about Atma, see, but the very few people really have understanding of Atma. So he comes to the level, so for Arjuna, it is even for us, okay, forget about Atma and Atma. So anything which is born is going to die. So what are the thing about, by crying you can't prevent death, so it is a fact you have to accept it. And also, if you want, what was before the birth, what were, what, what, what were you before? And what you are now, and what will happen again, nobody knows. Do you know what we were before? Most of us, none of us know, except God reveals it. And what will happen after death? We know, we don't know. So, avyakta dini bhutani, vyakta madhyani bharata, only in the middle. Avyakta nidhana neva, you will know what happens. So, something which you don't know, why do you want to grieve? So, this is other common sense explanation he's giving. Okay, so then that means you try to be established atma. So, this man is trying to convince him how to fight. So, then he, uh, that he finished Atma and Atma, the highest knowledge. Now, he, then he, uh, from 30 to 38, we finished in the last two weeks. There he talks about his dharma. What is the dharma of a Chetriya, Arjuna? To fight, fight a righteous war. Because then there are opposite bad forces, evil forces, doing bad things, our duty to destroy them. Even in our society, whenever there is negativity happening, whether in the family or in work or society, you, you should have righteous indignation. You should say, yeah, I don't accept that. At least you should express opinion. And if you can stop it, you should stop it. Being a passive witness for negative thing is you are part of the negativity. That is why in Mahabharata, it said four things. In a good thing, when you get it, Sankalpa, hey, let us do this service project, that man gets 25%, like we had the blanket project recently. Yes. When was that? Wednesday we went. Oh, yesterday only, right? Yeah, so 300 blankets and a lot of people were involved. The person who gets the idea, he gets a credit 
And the person who encourages this, yeah, let us collect the money, let us do that, he gets 25%. Who does this actually, who does that, he gets uh, the, the things. And the one who encourages it is good too, he gets. So everybody, same thing, bad thing. You get an idea here, yeah, let us do this bad, you'll get 20%. Even if you didn't do the bad thing, you'll get it. And you just encourage that, you'll get it. So, so everybody gets part, so you should be careful. We think good, encourage good, and do good. Not think otherwise, even if you are passively encouraging negativity, you will get. So here he is telling, what is your dharma? You are a kshatriya. You have to fight the righteous war. You should eliminate the evil people, all those um, uh, bad people. So if you don't do what happens, first common sense he is telling. That's because you're such a great hero. There are so many other great heroes. They will laugh at you. This guy is a coward. So when it comes to war, he was fighting before. Now he's running away from the war. They will laugh at you. That means you'll put to shame and you lose your good name. So why do you want to get a bad name? You All these days, the Arjuna, they think such a great hero and Dhananjaya, Partha. He has so many kiriti. He has so many titles because of his prowess and his one-pointedness, his great archery. So why do you want to lose that? So first he is putting in a common sense. Then he is giving a higher explanation. So what happens? Okay, you go out, fight war. See, there, if you fight war, if you die, in the war you can die. You will go to heaven, Swarga, so because that is the duty. People, the warriors who die in the war, like all these people in the work, uh, fight for the country or for a good cause. So they will go to, so because that is their duty. But if you win the war, they says, what is, what is it beautiful? He says, Hatova prapsi swargam. Once you die, once you win, you enjoy the thing, you become the king, you are the one who will uh, think. So either way it is good. If you die, it is good because you will go to heaven. If you win the war, it is also good, you will rule the uh, kingdom. So if you run away, you will get, first he says you will get bad name, people will laugh at you, the society will say this is a coward, he is running away from the challenges. This is not just in the war, in life we all have challenges, that is why people when they get challenges at work, home, in society, they will run, run away. How do they run away? They get depressed or they take to drugs, alcohol and various other means that is running away. This is instead of saying, this we can refer to that. Instead of that, you face the challenges with determination. Yes, that is a part of life. So if you do that, this is what he is telling. He says, then this is the beautiful last time we said, tasmad utishta kaunteya yuddhaya kratanishchaya. That means with firm determination, that means all of us, yuddhaya, fight. So how, how, why is it? Uttishta, get up. So that means don't be in slumber, don't have inertia. Just like sometimes we say, yeah, this is enough of the headaches, just let it be. We just want to resign to the things. No. It says, get up. That is why the famous Kashtopanishad, Uttishtata, Jagrata, Prapya, Varanibhata, the famous quotation of which Swami Vivekananda used to get up. Arise, awake, and stop not till the goal is reached. So you should not stop in the middle. Sometimes we get distracted, sidetracked. So till we reach the goal, you should that. So three important things. Uttishtata, get up. He says, and then fight with what? Determination, enthusiasm. So in all of us for life, the challenges we meet so that we reach the goal. Goal? What is the goal? The moksha, mohachaya, our self-realization, our liberation, whatever. That is the purpose of the whole spiritual practices. Swami says purpose, he started this organization. I want to emphasize again only two things. One is to make us realize our innate divinity, that we are divine. And manifest that, you may re realize that, but you should show in your thought, words and deeds that you are divine. And help others also realize that, the second purpose. So not only you realize there is selfishness, like Swami Vivekananda, what time he was with Sri Ramakrishna, and he says, what do you want? Oh, just I want to be going to contemplation, be Nirvikalpa Samadhi. He wanted to be there. That when he was a young man, he was only in his 20s. But then Sri Ramakrishna chided him, said, you are a selfish man. You want to just realization for yourself? No, you have to go and wake up so many 
sleeping souls and, and that is how he got inspired and he came to the West and traveled USA, UK, all the countries to spread the Vedanta. That is why it's called Vedanta Kesari, line of Vedanta spreading the knowledge of the truth. So that is the ultimate, you don't need to be content, you need to uh, spread the message. So that's why he says, with determination you try to reach the goal. So all of us, because all the distractions will be there more uh, in, the, in the path, so we need to stand here, yeah, that is my goal. How do you do that? The Shloka 38 last week we talked about. Huh? This is my favorite shloka, one of the. So, when you do the yuddha, every time he's telling, he says, Tato yuddhaya, you just fight. But you won't get sin because when you do yuddha, when you do war, what happens? There are casualties, you are killing other people. So, killing even one person is bad, you are going to kill so many people. Right? You will get sin. But he says you won't get sin. Papam, you won't get sin. How? If you follow this principle. Sukha dukhe samek the tea, take pleasure and pain, profit and loss, and success and failure with equal fortitude, with the equal attitude. If you do that, that is this whole thing is samatvam. That if you develop that samatvam, he says even whatever you do, you won't be bound by the sin. So you'll be completely free. So in life also, whatever we do, the right dharma we follow, there will be consequences. There will be, we'll get sometimes pain, sometimes pleasure, sometimes we have profit, sometimes you lose, sometimes we get success in what we do, failure, we may get criticism, sometimes blame, and sometimes praise. All these are natural. But if you have this attitude, then he says you won't get any more sin. Because if, if everything is going uh, good, everybody is a saint. When things are like in a swimming pool here, still water, we can anybody can swim, but people who know swimming. But in turbulent sea, when there is huge waves, torrential, expert swimmers can, even there, they manipulate and can come out. Similarly, the great masters in life, spirituality, in life we have so many challenges, so many things, ups and downs. How do you face them? Still you face them with a cheerful attitude, with a smile and courage and determination. The more you're spiritually strong, that happens. That is what uh, he's telling. This is an important, another sloka. Instead of all the two, two, five or six I told, this is, you know. so now we we'll start, so from sloka 39. Now he's going to talk about how do we do karma? Because every one of us does karma, right? Anybody who here doesn't do karma? <laughs> the morning, the time you are get up till you sleep. And even during sleep, you do that because you are breathing, your heart is beating. But once it stops, you are gone. That, that is why Lord Krishna says, Nahi kashchit chanam api jyatu tishtati akarma krit. Nobody, even for chanam api, even for a moment, no being is without any action. You do that. But how, that is why even Lord Krishna says about himself, he is God, supreme, he doesn't have anything. Name parthasti kartavyam trisuloke sukinchana nana vapta mavapta vyam vartavya echakarma. In three words, yeah, I don't have any obligation to work. He doesn't need to do any work. But still, I work. Why? To set an example to people. That means, hey, all of you need to work. For that example, like the Swami was the example, even till the moment he left his body, he was always busy blessing the devotees, and even now he continues to do, even though he left his physical form, <laughs> guiding us, blessing and guarding us, do that. They, they want to show an example, once we are here, our thing, body, mind, intellect, and spirit should be used for the service. So that is what, but how this attitude is the one he helps. So now we are starting Sloka 39. Here on he will be talking about how do we do the action. Eshate bhihite sankhya buddhir yoge tvimam shunu buddhya yukto yaya patta karma bandham prahasyasi. He says now all this time I have talked about sankhya yoga. That is the highest philosophy, nature of your atma. So sankhya is sankhya philosophy. That is why the second chapter is sankhya. Sankhya Yoga, so that Sloka 12 to 
30th is about difference between Atma and Anatma. That is why sometimes you may be thinking I'm repeating because this is very heavy stuff. If it's repeating boring, I may, forgive me, because to sing, this is a heavy thing. We need to know. So 12 to 30, he said difference Atma to Anatma. And 31 to 38, he takes what is the Dharma. So this is all Sankhya Yoga. That is what Lord Krishna is telling. Hey, I have talked to you about Sankhya Yoga, which is the highest philosophy. Now, I am telling you about karma, that is action, yoga, because we are all involved in action. Karma bandham prahisesi, because what is the source of bondage? Is karma. So why are we all born? Because of karma, we are karma janmas. Whereas avatars, saints are karana janmas. They are born for a purpose. They are also born in this earth, but they are a purpose to get us out of this bondage. Like somebody beautifully gave, actually Swami gave, like you're in a jail. So just we are born because something wrong thing you did, you they put you in jail. So you need to get out of the jail after you finish your th thing or doing good deeds. But jailers who are taking care, they're also in the jail, right? They're also in the jail, but they have a freedom. Whenever they want, they can come, they can go, and they can even take these uh, prisoners out. They have freedom like that. So we are all bound. We have no freedom to go when we want, except you finish. Whereas the people like uh, Mahatmas, saints, sages, avatars, they can give you know. So why are we born? Because of the karma and same karma the avatar does. Because we do expect in the results. It creates this bondage. And we think, okay, so you do good karma, you'll get good results. Bad karma, bad results. There is natural. Swami says if you put a mango seed, you don't expect a, uh, a thing, you'll get only mango tree. If you put a thorn seed, you'll get thorn plant. So you can't expect a mango fruit. So whatever you sow, you reap. So don't expect you did something wrong, you can't expect. That's why even Jesus said, as you sow, you reap. This law of karma, inexorable. So, so you have to pay for the uh, karma. So that is why we should be careful what kind of karma you do and what action. Because even good you do, you get good result. Bad you do, bad result. So you do good good things. You do some your yagam, yajyam, and you propitiate mother, lachmi, or this. You get that prosperity, you'll get this. You'll get what we do, it will take you to heaven. But heaven is like a temporary place. You'll come back again, again. Chine punye matte loka. Again, you'll come back to that. Again, you go through cycle. And same thing, bad thing, they said you'll go into hell, you'll live in uh, the place. So, good you do, you are uh, again come back, bad you do. So, then how to do that? Because the, the Swami Bacon beautifully said, we are all bound to iron chains. This bad thing is iron chain. Okay, so it's bad. Good, good karma is golden chain. Golden chain also binds you, right? You chain is chain whether you are bound. So, to get out of this bondage of thing is you need to know the secret of karma, how to do that. That is what the whole secret of nishkama karma. Otherwise, the cycle of birth and death will go on continuing because good, good, bad, bad. That is what we should remember because a lot of people think, oh, what do you want? I want to go to heaven. But heaven is clearly, Lord Krishna said and Swami also said, chine punye matte loka Once you finish, you'll come back. It is like, for example, you have lots of Money anyway, I don't go to, but people, some people may want to go to Hawaii or Monte Carlo or uh, Las Vegas, something to so called pleasure. But once they go there after a week or two weeks, once you finish, maybe you come back again, right? You are home. Similarly, these good things, whatever you day, we go there and then again come back. But you don't want to go to a place where you don't uh, come back again. That's why in the morning, Suprabhatam, we chant. Uh, parandhama jnana vijnana shobita. Parandhama means tadhama paramamama. Having gone there, you won't come back. So, we, we heaven, if you go there, you'll come back. So, in the morning, Suprabhata, that is where you should know the meaning. We say, Suprabhata medam punyam ye patanti dineti de te vishanti parandhama. We say parandhama regular, it's not like a heaven, it is. Having that is why Lord Krishna says about Parandama is Yadgatva Nanivartante Tadhama Paramama. Having gone there, there is no coming back. So how do you do that? For that, you need to have 
this um, uh, thing, how to do the action. Okay, now we we'll go to what anybody in the between any comments or questions, please ask. 40. Neha bi kramana shosti pratyavayo na vidyate swalpa mapyasya dharmasya trayate mahato bhaya. This is also a very important point he makes. These are all like formulas. Swalpa pyamasya dharmasya. Little dharma trayate mahato bhaya. So many severe troubles. Even if you do some little good act, it will never go waste. That is very, very important. So whatever this face is, whatever good you do, you never go waste. It's always there in your spiritual bank balance. So somebody said, oh, I'm doing this spiritual practice, like all those guys are enjoying. They have, they drink, eat meat, have partying, go to this place, that place, are enjoying. I am, I don't do that. I just have very strict sense control and then this thing. But I also not liberated at what the whole thing, life is gone, I didn't liberate, I wasted, at least those guys had good time, <laughs> and I didn't have that, and neither they got liberated, what is the point? That is where Lord Krishna assures, whatever you did, it will never go waste, he gives assurance. Wherever you stopped, in the next life, our purpose is not to be born again, but if you really do start from that stage, say you have got, 90% marks, you're all this, 100% you, 100 you get, you get liberated, then no born again. Say 90% you got, that, then you will be born in a family of saintly people like Jnaneshwar, Namadev, Tukaram, great saints like uh, Vivekananda, born with their parents, like that family you will be born. So that you will get liberated, that life itself, your parents, you will be born such a way. Then you, are, you have 50% good, but <laughs> still you didn't graduate. So you will be born in a family that are wealthy, well-to-do, comfortable life, but they have spiritual interests. They are not 100% spiritual like those saintly people, but they have a good family, but they have spiritual interests. A lot of us may fall into that category you have, have but you have some spiritual interests. And then 25% you <laughs> have, then they have little bit interest and most of the thing, worldly life. And you have got no good thing at all, so you may not be, not only be born as a human being, you may be born as a, like you know, she decides such as, I will refer to that, you may be born as a snake <laughs> or a frog. No, there is all st stories are there. It is not Shri Baba himself said. So that right, that Virabhadra, Bhachana, Basapa, so this guy was the people in the past life, that human being, but he is born as a snake. He is born as a frog. He may be born as a goat. And she may be born as a dog. So it can be born. Not only you may not be born as a human being, you will reverse back. So better to make, do the good. The more the good you do. So this is, salpamasya dharmasya trayate mahato bhavat. Even little thing you do, it will be there in your spiritual bank. But don't worry. So just go on doing good. That is very, very important. Then how do you do that? Next sloka. This is also very beautiful. Vyabasayatmika buddhi. Ekehe Kurunandana Bahushaka Anantascha Buddhayo Abhyavasayana. Beautiful. That means cultured mind, Vyavasayatmika means cultured mind is Ekehe Kurunandana. Is that one pointed? Bahushaka Anantascha Buddhayo Abhyavasayana. Uncultured mind is scattered. They will think this, next moment that, that moment that. So one pointedness is very important to reach goal in anything, whether you are in sports, music, uh, or literature, or in a scientific field, uh, and more so in spirituality. It's very, very important. That's why Lord Krishna gave Arjuna the Gita. Now, Dharmalaja is embodiment of Dharma. He could have given to him. Bhima is very strong. He could have given to him. And the Nakula and Sardeva, they're very intelligent, and they could... But he chose Arjuna. Why? Swami says, because he has one-pointedness. Many reasons. One is he has one-pointedness. That is the example we talk about when um, his uh, teacher, Dronacharya, took all the disciples at his, uh, uh, to the forest and told, hit a bird. He wanted to test them. So then he, what do you see? Dharmaraja said, oh, I see the bird and the uh, branches and sky. Okay, next one, what do you see? I see the bird and the leaves. So each one. But only Arjuna said, I just see the eye of the bird. Just it made me so one-pointed 
that means he has got he doesn't see anything else so like same thing you should give highest priority to god that is why swami said joy is jesus first others next yourself last highest priority to god even sai if you want to hear yes swami, swami first. first all others next that i little so that one pointedness to give to god that is the thing important because for some people you want to serve the god and mammon as you cannot serve two masters jesus said so just you should serve the lord always otherwise it is uh, the anand sidam krishna said beautiful example so there are some insects the insects in cow dung uh, in, uh, they they born in cow dung they grow in cow dung they die in cow dung and there are some things house flies what do they do they go and sit on gulab jam nice fruits and all that and then another time they go and stand in the garbage filth but honey bees they want only the honey of the flower they would rather die because they don't want to go for garbage similarly three kinds of people first people they are always immersed in sense pleasure they don't even think about the purpose of life god or anything they are born the swami says khana peena marna so on this they are eating drinking sleeping they don't have time that's why all of us are blessed to be able to even think about god so that is the lowest house flies a lot of become house flies is sometimes you enjoy satsang this and then other time you got sense indulgence that is like house fly but you should be like honey bees that means you only talk about god you want to listen about god and serve god so that is the like honey bees so that is what that is people is if you have then you reach the goal there is vyavasaya atmika buddhi ekeh that one pointedness is very very important and also swami gave another nice example even sri ramakrishna like when people are ladies particularly they stitch something in the needle when you want to put that thread what do they do they make it sharp and then put it if there are too many fibers around it won't enter right so they made it with water with something you make it pointed then it goes through and and even swami says the sunlight when it is diffused it doesn't do but you put the convex lens with concentrated it falls it can even burn a hole in the um, uh, paper so that one pointed net when it comes the same thing they get power whereas if you are scattered brain it is that is why in think of multitasking sometimes we become scattered brain so we should be careful live in the present and focus on that it says that is very important vyavasaya atmika buddhi ekeh kurunandana bahushaka anantascha buddhayo avyavasayanam uncultured mind is a scattered mind so we should always try to have that one pointedness so at this time is up yeah still we have slokas okay so next now he is talking about people who don't have that one pointedness how do they behave so then next next three shlokas he is talking about that so i will just um, chant and tell the meaning yami mam pushpitam vacham pravadyancha vipaschitah veda veda vadarata partha nanya dastiti vadina kamaatmana swargapara janma karma phala pradam kriya vishesha bahulam bhogaishwarya gatim prati bhogaishwarya prasaktanam taya apakruta chetasam vyavasayatmika buddhi samadhyo na vidhiyate why people cannot do meditation we all want to do meditation and then this way how, how much how much is dharana we talked about it dharana dhyana samadhi ne patanjali how many uh, minutes is dharana 12 seconds 12 seconds if you can think one pointedly that becomes a dharana then dhyana is 12 times 12 dhyana is meditation that is 144 seconds that means 2 minutes 24 seconds so just that shows why we are not able to even think like that then finally samadhi is 12 times uh, dhyana why we are not able to because he was telling too many desires so even when they do the spiritual practices they are interested in thing you do this puja you will get money you will do this puja you will get uh, this this is in vedas 
there are three sections. One is karma kanda, that is where we have to do yajnas, yajas, pujas, vratas, we do sachinan, vratam, this vratam. Yes, they will give the results, but that will bind you again and again. She says, people, because they want a lot of desires, they go on doing these things. So then what happens, they got up so much into that, this is called ritualistic aspect of that, then they will get the results because whatever karma you do, you are going to get it. But that is not the ultimate. Then you will be caught up in only in those things. So you are rich, you will become more rich, you will become famous, you will get that because there is a prescribed thing in the Vedas, you are going to get it. But if you want to get liberation, that is not the way. So you need to have that one-pointed purpose. Even if you use those, use it for that purpose. That is why he says, that is why they are not able to have one-pointedness when they do meditation, because they are caught up in how to get their desires fulfilled always. They are in the Veda Vatartha, they are not interested in the highest. So that is why they are not able to um, have the uh, one-pointedness. Then how should you behave? This is, this is another important shloka. Traigunya vishaya veda nistraigunyo bhava arjuna nirdvandvo nitya sattvasto niryoga chema atmavan. He says, these Vedas, all the Vedas we talk about, Rig Veda, Ejur Veda, Sama Veda, Dharvana Veda, all those Vedas, they're all good because Vedas are uh, aporushayas. They didn't come from human beings, they came from God. They are the breath of God. They are considered these uh, Vedas. But they deal with these three gunas, sattva, rajas, and tamas. Because when we have three things, we should remember basic thing at these Vedas. First, they do karma kanda, because we are all involved in karma. You need to run a life, you need a good, comfortable place to live, good family, good things. Basic, if you don't have, that is why Swami Vekan that said, don't go and teach Vedanta to a hungry man, first give him a piece of bread. First, you need to have basic necessity full. So that is talk about karma kanda, that is one. Upasana kanda, then you get purity, then you get hymns, you praise the Lord, there is all samhitas and all that. Then comes jnana kanda, that is Upanishad. So don't get stuck, he's telling, the, these Vedas talk about in this realm of three gunas, karma kanda, upasana kanda. But nistrai gunyo bhava juna, you should go beyond the three gunas. Because three gunas are the <coughs> chains, as I said, Raj, Ra, tamas guna say iron chain, and Rajo Guna is like a silver chain, and Sattva Guna is like gold chain. They all bind you. But if you want Traigunya Vishaya Veda, these Vedas, people say it's this, they are they will all in the realm of these three Gunas. Nistraigunyo Bhava Juna should go beyond the three Gunas. Then how do you know you have been beyond the three Gunas? These three, three qualities he is telling. First, Nirdvandvo. That means you are not affected by dualities, because we are all affected by dualities, right? So, success and failure, profit and loss, praise and blame, and um, pleasure and pain, all those dualities bother us. That is why Swami, first time he was in 1947, when he wrote his famous letter, historic uh, letter to his brother addressing his devotees, that was May 25th, I think, 1947. Right, Krishna, do you remember that? May 20th, May 25th, he wrote, Manchi Chaddalu Kuda Samamuga Bhavin Chute Bhakti Naku. Definition of bhakti, de devotion is people who treat everything as equally, they are my devotees. So he says, Nirdvando, you are not affected by uh, these pairs of opposite. Nitya Sattvasto, that means it's not regular Sattva, Nitya is complete purity. They don't have any trace of impurity in their heart. Niryoga Chema Atmava, they're established in that self, self knowledge. And they are not desirous, I want this, I don't want this. So, because most of the life, the pleasure problem is, I want this, I don't want this. Likes and dislikes are the two kinds of planets which put us go round and round. But these people, when because they went beyond the three gunas, they don't have these things. They don't have craving for something. Or they, so everything, they are very unperturbed. They are in that beyond the three uh, gunas, and they are always beyond the dualities, and then Nitya Santasto. So anyway, I think we had 
lots of discussion. In, in, anything, anybody has any questions, are you happy and understood everything? So you are in now, we need to aim high. Swami said, low aim is Christ. So just, even we do day-to-day -day normal thing, you can reach this stage when you have that knowledge, how this nishkamas karma. So the, here I can tell you one nice story, which was also favorite of Swami Vekanda called Dharma Vyada story. I don't know how many of you know they shared this. So there was a, this um, great monk, but they, they, they go place to place in uh, getting alms and uh, that's the way they live. And you are householders, we are supposed to give them alms. That is the tradition. So he goes to a house and then he asks, Mom, just I want alms. That lady doesn't right away come. She comes after a little uh, while. So then she he gets upset. She, he says, so I'm waiting. How could you do that? So he looks at her very angrily because she said, I was serving my husband. I was taking care of him. I had to feed. I was feeding him. That is, that is why, sir, I am delayed. So this guy is so arrogant because he's a spiritual person. So he got um, looked at her angrily. Then she nicely says, I am not the bird to die. <laughs> because he was in the forest when going, and there was one bird pooped on him, and he was got mad, looked at it, and the bird dropped dead. Because he had the power, because when you these great saints, that is why you should not irritate the spiritual people. They get bad, bad vibrations, they're dangerous. So he dropped. So she is about, she is uh, completely dedicated to her husband, doing the duty as a dharma. So she is b better than him, saint. So just, he was surprised, shocked. How does she know that uh, he, he, they did this? And uh, she felt, oh, forgive me, mother. I'm sorry, so, the, the wrong thing. So I didn't know. So please tell me, what is your secret? How did you? Because she did nothing as household duty and she was serving husband. So if you want to learn, go to this Vyada, so this particular guy. So Dharma Vyada, they call, because he will teach you. So he goes to the town and then goes there. So he wants to meet that. He goes there. Where is this guy? Where is that? Goes there. That man was in this uh, shop working. He was a butcher. He was going on cutting meat and cutting, giving people. So he says, I, I came to wait where I have to finish my days because he does his livelihood. So he finishes at 5 p.m. or what is it? Now we'll talk. So he, then he goes and tells. So this very beautiful in Mahabharata is called Vyada Gita. He teaches, even though it looks like what he's doing is butcher and uh, selling meat, but whatever profession you are, whatever you do, the attitude, this Nishkama Karma is that is with the greatest secret. Lord Krishna says, doing that, still you attain complete knowledge. So, so this monk who was gave everything, he has to learn from him. What is the secret of uh, Nishkam Karma, selfless service? So that is the whole thing. So we'll conclude here, so we'll, and of lots of points we discussed. Actually, probably we should have from next time onwards somebody who can, before we start, summarize the points we discussed so we can take uh, um, by rotation. So just who, anybody who want to volunteer next time, just tell, and then we can further discussion. Instead of monologue, that will be good. So Pravina is shaking, so you will give the summary, okay, Pravina, next uh, yeah. time when we start, you do that. So like that we can have different, then it will be really uh, nice. Okay, so if there is no questions or comments, we'll conclude and go for the next uh, session. I had one question, but you answered it in your uh, uh, out of five Pandavas, why did he choose Arjuna? They were all born to yeah. uh, demigods. So why Arjuna? Because Actually, I gave you one expression, but there are more than that. So Arjuna, one thing is, is one pointed, right? In, that's why it is app appear, uh, applies to all of us. So you need to have that one pointedness, whatever. Second quality he had was he had absolute faith in God's words. I know you, you know the story that both were going on a stroll, Arjuna and Lord Krishna, and he shows a bird, and then what is that bird? That bird was a crow. Then uh, Arjuna, Lord Krishna says, what is that crow? He says, no, no, it is not a crow, it is a parrot. Then Arjuna says, yeah, yeah, yeah it is a parrot. Then uh, Lord Krishna says, no, no, it is a peacock. He says, yeah, 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 it is a peacock. Then he says, no, 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 it is a dove. He says, yeah. He says, uh, Lord Krishna says, Arjuna, 
whatever you say, yes, 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 you don't, you are a grown up guy, don't you see? Then beautifully says, Lord, my eyes may deceive me, but your uh, words never deceive. Your words, God's words are more true. That is highest sense. Second, even if you say no, you can make it like that because you are the Lord. You can make, you said it is not a doubt, you'll make it doubt. So what can, so whatever you say is true. That kind of absolute faith he had, that the second noble quality. Third quality he had was he had priority to God in life. One of the one part. So you know, the, before the war, so these Duryodhana and uh, uh, Arjuna go to help, take the help of Lord Krishna. So one sits at the feet who was uh, Arjuna, and this man who is arrogant, this Duryodhana, sits at the head. So then when he gets up, first he says, Arjuna, what do you want? And he, but there the thing is, he says, I am only one side. I will take one side. I won't fight. I won't take any arms at all. I won't fight. And the next portion, two portions you divide, is all army, everything, my whole army, everything I will give. You choose what you want. So this Duryodhana was worried, my God, this guy will ask for army. But Duryodhana, uh, Arjuna is smart. He says, no, even if you don't fight it, I don't uh, care. I want you to be there. That guy was relieved. He says, I have the whole army. So that is the foolish. Wherever you have God, Yatra Yogeshwaro, Krishna, Yatra Patro, Dhanuddha, Tatra, Sri Vijay or Bhuti. Wherever God is with you, success is yours. The whole world may be against you. It doesn't matter. But you choose God over the whole world. So he chose that. Arjuna said, I want you, but not it. But even that Lord Krishna, he gave a word that he won't take weapons. He was almost tempted to take a weapon. He take, what happens is this um, Bhishma was putting the uh, weapons after weapon, Astras and uh, Arjuna. He can demolish him. I know that. Then, uh, the Lord Krishna gets so agitated. So he, he takes his things to uh, do that. Then Bhishma says, for the sake of devotee, you will even you break your vow, but he doesn't use it. Then Arjuna says, don't use that chakra because you took a vow, you won't use the weapon. Let me. Then he handles that. So there is another quality Arjuna had is, gave preference to God more than anything else. So that is another important um, quality he has. And he has got also implicitly obedience. That means, Lord, whatever, uh, that is why in the end of the whole Gita, Karishye Vachanam Tava. Just, I will implicitly, immediately follow his command. So, that is another important quality. It is another quality I used to talk uh, about. Uh, poor, poor ah, there's another thing is discrimination. Good. I'm happy that means you are <laughs> studying. Remember, in life, Everything is purva tapa, paschat tapa. Before he go into the war, he was crying, oh my God, I have to kill these people, bloodshed, what will happen? I don't want this kind of uh, uh, <coughs> bloodshed. This is very bad. You think about the consequences before. That is called purva tapa. Whereas Dharma Raja, the whole war, before he didn't think, after the whole thing is done, he did a big ajna, oh, I got sin, I, so he has pachyatapa. So when Lord himself is direct in the war, you won't get any sin. But he didn't have Dharma Raj, he didn't have that common sense. So that is why another quality, good quality Arjuna had is purotapa, not pachyat. Similarly for us, whenever we jump into action, before you go into action, you think of the pros and cons. Is it good, bad, what will happen, what won't happen? After the whole thing is done, you have better, the crying is no good, it won't take you anywhere. So this is another part. So these are the four points, uh, Padma. One is one-pointedness. Second is highest preference to God. And third, absolute faith in the words of God. And fourth is the, this Purvatapa, that is uh, discrimination. Huh? Absolute faith, Sitapranya. Sitapranya has more qualities, we'll tell about 18. Slokas are there. So now I want you to, to read <laughs> and uh, give the points of 454 to 72. It's good because of Mahatma Gandhi in the old age, he learned, you can learn the uh, 18 slokas, Charanjivi. So you can and, uh, tell us that will be good because then we'll become what Tita Prajna is. <laughs> when we, no, really, I'm not joking. When we do our own study on the things, just otherwise, 
as I said, so it goes and goes the other way. So it is good to do the study. That will be good. Okay. Oh, it is. We went beyond the time because a question. So, Sai Ram will meet next week.